Okay, game on. Welcome. We're about to get started. Tune in. the alarm will sound. If this happens, we'll need you to evacuate the building. So two emergency exits, um, one down just here. Might be able to see the sign, which is also where the women's toilets are. Um, and the other one is on the other side of the lift. So we'll need you also evacuate the building. And our meet point is in post office square, which is just down here. You can probably follow um, the hordes of people if we have to do that. If there is um, an earthquake, please move away from the windows. Um, that cover and hold. Um, and if the alarm goes off um, during an earthquake, which it probably will, if it's a half decent one, we do ask that you don't evacuate the building unless there's evidence of fire. Um, one other thing, you need swipe cards to get in and out of the toilets. So we've got these placed around the building. There's a couple just hanging up here on this pillar. Um, so if you go to the bathroom, just grab a card, otherwise you won't be able to get back in. Um, and we've also got some more down the other end where some of you guys will be breaking out. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Nadine. Okay, so before we get started, we just wanted to set some context for everybody. Um, so to start us off with that, we've got Daryl, who is um, the lead of the Service Innovation Program and one of the brains behind the Service Innovation Lab. Great. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. And um, hello to everyone in the world of virtual over to my left, uh, my right and your left. Um, one of the, the useful things when you've got a little bit of spare cash towards the end of the year when you're government, you're allowed to spend it on a few things. There's a few things we're not allowed to spend it on, but there's a few things that we are. And um, one of the things that we noticed quite early on in this kind of cross-agency space is um, literally where do people need to work together? Where can we actually carve out our space? that provides an opportunity for people to truly put the customer at the centre of the service design and delivery experience when interacting with government. Where can we get teams together that can actually meaningfully work together, be supported in their work, accelerate some of that work and kind of do things differently? And where is a place that we can actually bring kind of the private sector and in the community sector to work with government? And um, in the Kaikoura earthquake, a whole bunch of real estate in Wellington became quite constrained. A lot of people needed to share buildings, share desks, share all sorts of things. So at about that time, um, this space became available. And um, a little bit of spare cash, opportunity arises. And what we did is we said, well, let's actually grab all of this floor print. So the room that you're in here, or this end of the room, um, we use for workshops and a whole bunch of things. And as you move further towards the north, um, following the North Star or whatever other analogy you like, uh, there's a whole bunch of amazing things going on that you'll get a sense of and experience today. The thing that's quite exciting about this particular space and you folk joining us today is that we are actually making a commitment to put the customer at the centre of the service design and delivery experience with government. We are genuinely committed to working with the private sector and the community sector to do things better together. We are committed as a whole bunch of government agencies working in a whole bunch of ways around trying to improve how we work together, but more importantly, how we actually deliver better public services for the citizens of New Zealand. And we don't do this alone. Assurity Consulting have supported us with the provision of this place, they're our landlord, but they're also adding some value and real value and some of the agile and innovative coaching and support for the teams that are working here. In addition, there's other providers who come into the space and deliver some amazing things as well. And I just want to point a little bit to Creative HQ, who have uh, also at the same 
same time they're running the R9 accelerator, and some of you have been involved in that. They also come in here and deliver some amazing things with some amazing people. So we set up a co-opetition model here to see if that would work as well. So this has been an experiment. Finishes on the 30th of June, principally because my money runs out on the 30th of June, but also um, we just wanted to time bound this thing. So you are in a place that we government have taken a real step into the unknown for us as government, committed to doing something differently in, a, in quite a significant way. We can't do that though without you folks. So thank you so much for coming along today. Looking forward to see some of the outputs and kind of what happens from today and what that, that is all about. But we operate within Better Public Services Result 10 or the Service Innovation Work Program within a slightly broader context as well. Uh, the, the transformation of, of government as we know it in this whole new world of digital government, digital economy, digital citizens um, sits within the wider frame that um, some of our colleagues are also working on. So I just want to invite um, B to come up and have we chat just about that to set the slightly broader context within which our program and I suspect a whole bunch of your activities are going to be discussing today. So here you go B. Thanks Daryl. Yeah. Hi I'm B. I don't want to take uh, too much of your time but um, just want to build on what Daryl said. So, um, our respective boss is Colin McDonald. He's a government chief information officer. Um, he's been asked to accelerate uh, on all the good work that we've been doing in digital transformation in government. Uh, so, this is part of a better public services program being led of State Services Commission. Uh, so, I just wanted to set some context. He's um, putting forward a vision that he's discussed with his colleagues, his chief executive colleagues, and he's also about to discuss that with senior ministers. And then we're really keen to bring that conversation back out to to you guys as well. So I um, just want to make sure it's connected up with what you've um, been uh, delving into today. forms part of a, a, a bigger picture. Colin talks about the vision for, for eco, an ecosystem of services where the government really opens up, uh, opens up data, uh, books to the third sector, NGOs, etc., cetera, to, to try and provide uh, better public services in a different kind of way. So just wanted to set that overarching vision. Um, hopefully we can come out and, and talk to you in a bit more detail about that. It's really it's essentially the same stuff that we'll be going in today. Uh, so that's all. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to stand over here because I have props. I need them close to hand. Um, I'm Pia. Uh, there's only a few more um, minutes of, of talking and then we'll get into the doing because that's really what we're all here to do, right? So um, I'm going to just give a little bit of context of what we're trying to get out of today. The first thing is you were asked as you came in um, to just kind of try to stick to your first name and your sector. The reason for that is because people are coming here in this little group from right across the spectrum. About a third of you are industry, a third of you are community um, sector and civic hackers, and about a third of government, some of which are coming from local government, some from central government. So there's a really interesting mix here. If you talk about which organisation from what level you are, we start to unfortunately overlay that um, unnecessary barrier to open communications. So the goal here is to have a very blue sky think where we're exploring a very new idea. Now, why are we exploring this idea? Well, what we've seen all around the world is um, in the Digital Transformation Office in Australia, in the uh, Government Digital Service in um, New Zealand, and by the way, uh, in, in the UK, and I apologise for my accent, I've come from across the ditch, um, but um, that in a lot of these digital services across the world, what they've usually done is sort of gone towards the way of just taking government, how it's been done for the last few hundred or thousand years, and making it digital. What we want to explore is a different operating model. What would happen if you actually said, government isn't a king in a castle anymore, but rather is a node in a network. Distributed power needs distributed solutions. Distributed um, problems need distributed solutions. What if we made it so that government can do what government does better, but in a way that is modularized, componentized, and you can start to make those different aspects available for industry, citizens, people, um, and um, community sectors, um, journalists to actually build on top of. So you can actually start to build new services, new products, new analysis. Rather than trying to find the one way, you actually open it up for there to be many ways. Rather than trying to boil user needs down to the, the biggest issue and then iterating on top of that, rather than iterating towards who knows where and actually reinforcing the status quo, we're trying to explore what could an entirely different process be. So this is very experimental. You are very much in the twilight zone. And as such, taking off some of those barriers to communication is a very important part of today. So um, we're trying to explore what, what digital transformation could look like. We're trying to explore, explore this as a platform idea because user-centered design plus agile in a lot of cases has unfortunately led to prettier silos. We're trying to figure out what you know a non-siloed world could look like. 
so there's a few activities we're going to be doing today. Um, I, I, when we talk about Govs and Platform, I'm just going to quickly give a bit of an introduction um, just to where the thinking's gone. Can I get a text, please? There's the idea that um, even when we're talking to agencies about um, this idea, quite often people start from the, okay, you just build an API. Yeah, but <laughs> how deep do you need to take that? How componentized do you need to make that? I remember having one agency say, oh, we want to build this new service for being able to identify what entitlements a person is, um, is eligible for. And that's a, you know, that's a really good goal. But they started from, all we need to know is information about the person and then we can figure it out. I'm like, well, no, actually. To deliver that service, you actually need the business rules. What are the business rules around entitlement, around what, you know, what um, different things are eligible for what? So business rules is one component. Um, a second component might be the services. What's the information about services and their attributes and those kinds of things? So there's a second thing. And then the third thing might be the information about the person, which, by the way, might be un in the unauthorized space. It might be a person self-selecting certain things to be given information rather than logging in. So just there, there's three, one of which could be um, open or secure, and the other two could be compl completely open. So if we start to break it down into things like transaction services, business rules, data and content as three starting points, then you can start to so um, then you can start to break down what might be useful modules. So we've got three activities we're going to be doing today. The first activity will be exploring what this could mean, exploring what a level of modularization or, or, or what sort of components that government actually has. If through that conversation we find you know what there's nothing that the government has that we want, <laughs> end of um, experiment. You know, end of experiment. If we go through and say, well, here's all the things that, that government has, and um, but you know there's no point actually. Why don't we just outsource it all? That would be an interesting outcome. I mean, I'm sure that there's some people that are, are driven that particular way. Um, but what the first exercise will be to say, you want to be able to look at open versus secure access to components. An open component might be a services register. You know, a register of all the human services that um, government has that you can actually be able to use. Citizens Advice Bureau being able to consume that as an API rather than having scores of volunteers updating that manually, which is a huge amount of work and effort. Um, a closed, you know, there's heaps of closed data, you know, secure data, uh, examples. An open transaction might be reporting a pothole. A closed transaction might be, um, you know, uh, registering for, uh, uh, you know, getting a passport. You know, there's a secure version and there's an open version. An open version of business rules might be the regulation. I'm working back home on a concept of regulation as a platform. If all the regulation was openly available in programmatic way, suddenly you can actually say as a business, I'm actually going to talk to the logical source at the source and be able to actually, you know, have my business be compliant and do all the things I need to do and, and report the things I need to do automatically rather than having, you know, lawyers effectively acting as modems for regulation. Because, uh, you know, we go from intent to a lawyer to a written document which is read by another lawyer and then translated into business, right? We're using it as modems right now. Sorry, guys. Um, so that'll be our first exercise. Our second exercise it's a bit more fun, a bit more tactile, just so you know where you're heading. People don't understand platforms, or they have different ideas of platforms. People don't understand government, they have different ideas of government. People don't understand APIs, or they have different understanding of APIs. Everyone understands Lego. So the idea here will be to take some of your components and to build things. Tweet those things, put them on the wiki. We've got a wiki if you want to use that, or you can use Twitter, or you can just write stuff up on the wall. However you want to contribute, we will be watching the NZG AAP hashtag, so please tweet insights and such there. Uh, we also encourage you to, um, uh, when we get to the exercise, to put up photos of your builds when you make your builds. And what this helps us do is understand what is it that government can deliver, what sort of stuff could people build on top of government, and um, and that helps us analyse, you know, what might be useful for us to actually componentise. Because it's very easy to have one big Lego block that says just make it all one API, but it's not very helpful in terms of prioritizing stuff to make available for you. So that will be uh, an interesting and a fun exercise. And then finally, we're going to get into the needs, because there's no point talking about your user needs for this system until we all have a common understanding about what on earth we're talking about. So the first couple of exercises are about exploring the thing, building the thing, and then talking about where the thing could go from there. We will, at the end, have a survey, um, uh, just um, and, a, and a prioritization sort of aspect where we take all of the inputs from your first session put it into a, a card sorter so that you can then go to the URL and just say, here are the top five or top ten or whatever you like um, that you care about. And on the back of that, we can say, well, you know, if we took these three or five or ten things and actually prioritised making them available programmatically, you know, we could experiment with that. That could potentially form the basis of a work program moving forward, potentially. So it's very exciting. Um, we, I might 
uh, hand back over. I will just mention again, we have a whole bunch of people online tuning in. Hi, everyone from uh, all around New Zealand. In fact, after we put the invitation for this online, the very first tweet that someone said was, well, I'm in Auckland. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay. Here's how you can register as an online person. They went, oh, oh. So we just added a new ticket and we're live streaming. So thank you for that feedback and thank you for tuning in remotely. And, um, and again, all of these will be written up, all of it will be blogged, all of it will be published so that it can help inform a lot of different um, strategies and priorities and thinking moving forward. So um, have a good time, enjoy yourselves, and um, think big, think blue sky, and, and, um, and think as visionary as you possibly can. Any questions before we jump in? It's going to be awesome. All right, I'm going to continue chatting to our friends online. Um, I'll hand back over to our facilitators, and um, we'll see all the Lego build soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pia. Oh, sorry, one last thing. Yeah. Just prizes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The best builds are going to get prizes. They're very silly prizes, but we will be taking photos of you with the prizes. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, there's a little bit of incentive there. <laughs> all right, then. I will take our friends away. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're going to break you into groups because trying to do these sort of things with one big group will be impossible. So, uh, okay, happy people. Groups, um, Bear with me. We'll be down the far end and we'll, we'll, we'll take you off the and other end. And um, the group, uh, the groupings are on the table just behind the seats here. So we have a lot of people here. It's really cool. Okay, happy tweeple. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to talk you through the assignments that we're going to go through, or the, the, um, the feedback that we have. We have a wiki page up now that you can actually contribute directly to, or you can contribute your ideas to Twitter. I will be able to get sit down and do this properly online in just a second, but rather than holding you online for a two-hour event, which obviously, you know, try, coming in remotely is a little bit tricky. We've tried to optimize for you. What I'm going to be doing is effectively tweeting the three different assignments, uh, the three different things we're trying to do, three different pages, and then taking your questions about them for 10 minutes each. And that gives you a chance not only to understand what we're trying to do, have a bit of discussion about it, ask any clarifying questions, but um, also to then contri continue contributing as we continue to run the, the Meet Space event here in Wellington. So um, there's, a, there's about 20 of you online right now. I think a bunch from Australia and a bunch from Auckland and a bunch from around New Zealand. Might be some other further ones. So the first thing I might ask everyone to do is could you please tweet, if you're on Twitter, to hash NZGAAP, so New Zealand Government as a Platform, hash NZGAAP with your location. That'll be a nice little way for us to just quickly collect all that. Everything that goes to that Twitter hashtag, we will be collecting. Um, assessing, curating, and adding into um, the feedback um, and the report from this event. So, um, uh, looking forward to seeing that, and that gives us a little bit of indication who you are. Now, let's get into it. So, the background. So, you've heard a little bit of the background. What's what's going on? What we're trying to do. We're going to work through three examples. Um, we don't obviously need to do icebreaker with online. Uh, if I had a whole bunch of you on um, actual Google Hangouts, well, that might be possible. But there's too many of you for that. So, jumping straight into it. The first one is the government component. So you heard me ask a couple of questions about that. Um, I might jump on to Twitter and just see any questions. Um, it's probably going to run for about um, another half hour, Rob, uh, not for the full two hours. So um, you don't need to tune in for that. Uh, actually, for about 40 minutes. Um, but, um, and if there's any questions, please do put them up on Twitter. OK, thank you very much. So the first one is if you go to the wiki. So the wiki is up. Um, I'll retweet it again now, but it's just labplus, L-A-B-P-L-U-S dot wikispaces dot com. Old favorite tool of mine. I've used it many times for these kinds of things. Um, basically, there's, there's the three assignments are up there. Um, and you can actually go into the first page. Um, the first page is about those components. What sort of components can we imagine? So. Uh, what do we mean by Gov as a platform? I'd suggest you open each of these three pages up in a different tab, um, if you're a tabby kind of person. Um, I've added some examples there, so if we just talk through that again, and then again, if you have questions as we go, please put them up on Twitter so I can see them. 
and uh, is it fair to say the scope is more around governing as a platform to set aside issues around political systems? Great question, Steve. So this is not about governance. This is not about politics. This is about the public service. Um, this is about the services that are provided by the public service to the people, to the community, to business. Um, so the idea is more about government has a lot of content, a lot of data, a lot of systems, a lot of transaction services in the delivery of services that it does to the public. What aspects of those services, if it was made publicly available, would actually be helpful for you to build upon? The easiest example to talk about is um, the services register because um, no one has a single services register across government right now, so from an internal perspective that would be helpful. Um, but if the public had, an industry, had um, just a list of all of the human services the government provides and a list of all the API and web services, if it had those sort of two registers, if you like, but the human services with all the relevant metadata, you know, what age bracket is it relevant to, what age, what location, what um, circumstances, uh, what are the rules, the entitlement rules for those things. If all of that information was publicly available that you could build upon, you could integrate it into your service. You could imagine the Community Advice Bureau, you could imagine a local government or in, in a, you know, in other um, countries, the medium level of government. You could imagine um, banks, you could imagine um, civic hackers, being able to build new solutions and new ideas around that. So that's what we mean here, Steve. Um, I'll just take a couple more questions for a minute. Um, uh, thank you, Ian. We're joining in from all around the country. This is very exciting. And yes, there will be Lego involved. Security kills closed. So why can't it be open and still secure? So it's a great question. Thank you, Petrus. Um, I'm definitely more talking about secure than closed, and my apologies for that slip. Uh, I don't think close. you can have open and still secure, but the it's more around that spectrum of secure to open than closed to open. So that's the, the difference I'm trying to, uh, that we're trying to explore here. Um, certain things should probably be secure. You're applying for a passport, probably shouldn't be a, um, uh, you can sorry. You can certainly have open and still be secure. But when I say open access, I mean open access, not through uh, security um, means, not through some sort of access control list or, um, or or any other sort of trusted framework. And the reason for that is open access absolutely is implying um, that you don't have to necessarily sign anything or do anything or have a you know a technical framework for security. Uh, it could be read only, for instance. Secure is more about, um, you know, you, you need to be able to control um, how it can be used just to make, because you don't want just anyone, any old website being able to um, uh, apply for passports potentially as an example. Hopefully that answers that question. I'll take another question or two. Hopefully everyone um, can have a look now at the wiki. Uh, so what do we mean by Gov's a platform? So that page, you should be able to edit that page. Everyone should be able to edit that page. Um, and I, I have some examples up there, but you should be able to start editing that wiki. Uh, how's everyone going with that? I'll keep watching. Gov, okay, Gov Services as a platform. Yeah, but the problem is, sorry, so Gov, uh, Steve DeCosta just suggested that maybe Government Services as a platform keeps it tidy, uh, makes it a little bit clearer. I'm not sure it does though, because like that assumes that government should be providing the service. What if the service is literally just a API to a database? Um, it's a web service, so technical people would understand that, but anyone else wouldn't. So um, we'll, we'll play around with that terminology, thank you, but let's not get caught up in the lexicon too much. Let's get into the, um, the ideas. Okay, so if we, so the first page, um, I might just continue explaining that and then we'll move on. What do we mean by government's platform? Uh, so add the components, you would see value in being available from government. So you can just go through, you can edit that, you can add. We've got data content, transaction services and business rules. There's three categories. If you can think of other categories, please feel free to add them in. If you can think of other types of components, please feel free to add them in. Uh, you can all edit that page because uh, it should be publicly editable by anybody. If anyone has a problem editing it, please let me know straight away. Let's move on to the second page just to explain it. After you've done the first one, and I highly recommend you don't jump ahead steps because it won't make sense. Um, once you've had a bit of a think about different components, um, particularly because you are all remote, um, in the room we've got a whole bunch of uh, Duplo and, and building blocks uh, that people are using to do this, but you can use just a piece of paper, you could use, if you've got building blocks um, available to you, please use them. Um, you could use pretty much anything. Um, so, uh, but if you want to sort of come up with a bit of a, uh, a show and tell of something. So the example we've got here on the page has three components along the bottom. Um, in this case, we color coded them between government and non-government. So government's providing the white components. Uh, so, you know, because it's very, um, um, 
it's about white branded kind of things. Uh, so you might have the ingredients provenance coming from the Department of Health. You might have the ability to pay GST coming from um, the the IR, um, the Department um, of um, of Taxation, and then you might have food safety audits coming from local government. And then on top of that, the idea is that the person um, or organisation or company would be building additional components. So in this particular case, they've got smart kegs with sensors in the kegs to be able to uh, track utilisation, to track um, all the different chemical aspects, um, storage, temperature, all that good stuff. Um, and they might have smart kitchen cameras, which are actually uh, tracking you know, other sort of information about the utilisation or whatever. But on top of that, you end up with a smart pub app. And there's heaps of other sort of things we started thinking about this around sensor technology and such. But um, it's a very simple example. From our perspective in government, um, or as people trying to explore this idea in government, really drilling down to some of those components could be useful. You might have a, a, a build that has you know, hundreds of things in it. Um, I, I highly doubt it. Um, but um, trying to break those things down would be really helpful. Helpful. So, um, so you go into the second um, URL there. And by the way, if you go into a page and need to get back to the first page, just click Lab Plus on the top left side, and that'll take you back to the home page. Okay, so that's the second page. What would you build? Coming up with some ideas there, some feedback there. And then finally, um, once you've end all of this exercise, um, if you want to spend, if you're able to spend sort of 10 or 15 minutes um, having a think through this or if anything occurs to you, we're going to keep this open for about a week. Um, and that way, sort of as ideas occur to you, you can come back and contribute them any time. And then we'll be writing this all up, putting it all online um, as a bit of a, you know, curated sort of package. And if anyone, if anything's wrong with that, then people can, um, can add their own comments and, add, and that kind of thing. So we're going to try and do this as openly and cooperatively as possible. Um, and then this forms the basis of um, possibly work program moving forward, hopefully, um, but possibly um, planning for all of government and certainly testing this hypothesis. If this is the wrong thing to do, you know, that would be really good to know. If you think that you've seen it tried, please let us know. If um, you think that it's, it's worth pursuing, um, then that third page, what are your needs for this model? Have a think about you yourself within your, your company or your organisation or as a, as a developer. What are your needs? They could be technical needs, they could be environmental needs, policy needs, they could be support needs. You might need um, good developer kits or good documentation or good standardisation or you might, just be, you might just say, look, so long as it's a RESTful API, I don't care. Um, so put down your needs and we'll be pulling all of that together again. And um, in about an hour and a half's time, once uh, a few other things have um, uh, finalised here, then we've got oh, what is showing no access. You see a no access on the image. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, that's the wiki. All right, let me go and fix that right now. Um, that's weird. Uh, you can go through to the page, though, can't you? All right, that's all right. I'll go and fix that now. Uh, I'll fix that in just a moment. So um, if you go through to those pages, you should be able to edit them, add things. Um, and if you add your user needs in, if you have anything else that you think is worth um, considering, um, barriers that you have. So for some, I know companies, um, some companies have tried experimenting with this before and some agencies individually around the world have tried experimenting with this before where they start building APIs. Um, often those APIs are built from within government without any interaction or, or um, developer empathy for the people building it. Um, often they are built just collaboratively with one or two companies, which um, doesn't necessarily build the most open marketplace. Um, understanding what barriers you have either already experienced or could imagine being a problem, and they could be um, technical barriers, environmental support, um, bureaucratic. Um, I, I've always said that every barrier to entry that you add actually re reduces participation by 80%. So, um, and this has sort of been um, shown in a, in a few different studies. And so the, the problem there is, of course, if you add an NDA, an NDA is a barrier. A formal agreement with government is a barrier. Um, terrible documentation is a barrier. So, you know, with just two barriers, you've lost 96% of your potential participants in whatever it is you're doing. So please help us identify your barriers. Um, Benefits, benefits to users, to your organisation, to the broader New Zealand sector or, you know, community or government. Um, I know that there's a few people tuning in remotely, so, you know, just um, please feel free to contribute. We'd love to get your thoughts on this. And then finally, you know, should, should we be pursuing this idea? Yes, no, and your comments <laughs> below would be just fine. Um, hopefully everyone can edit the pages, even if they can't see that image, but I'll update that right now. And what I'll do is I'm just going to stay on the line. I'm going to go and fix that image so that people can see it. Uh, and then I'm going to stay on the line for another uh, 10 minutes to take questions. So uh, please add your questions on Twitter um, now so that I can answer them and help you be able to contribute. And then um, what we'll do is we will uh, report everything else uh, publicly a little bit later.
Okay, let me go fix this page. Ah, oh, that's really weird. Okay. All right, what I'll do is I'll tweet the image, which will fix the problem, I guess. Um, I'll probably make it better. Okay. Any questions? I'm adding this image right now. Again, apologies for the slight delay. You all know how it all is. Okay, Smart Pub up on Twitter. I'm going to link it right now back to that wiki. It's very simple. And don't get hopes up too much. It was just a little bit of fun from our team, just having a think about what's possible. So there you go. Have a quick look at that. Uh, latest. OK. There you go. And I will link that back to the wiki right now. OK, so any other questions? We've got another few minutes of questions. Um, this was the best way that we could think to be able to um, make it easy for people to contribute. So I hope I hope that um, without taking up too much of your time, because live streaming a, a group activity for two hours obviously wouldn't be all that much fun for anybody. <laughs> um, Smart Pub, um, link to the tweeters. Okay, then. So I'm coming back to questions now. Let's see if anyone's putting any. No. So is everyone clear with what to do, how to do it? Um, there are some links also to additional information on the wiki, so you can actually uh, get a feel for um, where this is coming from, where it's going. It will only take you probably 10 or 15 minutes to go through, um, skim through some of that material that we've got and help you get a little bit of background. Um, okay, then. What I might do then, if there's no other comments right now, is I might leave you all to have some fun, have a bit of a play, and, uh, and I'll come back and continue answering questions on Twitter. Um, a last chance for questions. I'll just give it another couple of minutes. I'm sure that there's some latency here as well. Yeah, then teams are starting here in the room to actually brainstorm and, and have a bit of a play, which is cool. All right, re first tab. A roast somehow connected or independent? First tab. Oh, first tab. A roast somehow connected. No, they're independent from each other. My apologies. That probably should be clear. I'll edit that page now and add it. Um, Notes, these are not records. They are independent um, columns from each other, just list stuff. Apologies for that. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Very appreciated. Uh, Jonathan, thank you for that. Cool. Anything else? Okay, my excellent, excellent people. I'm going to leave you there then, rather than holding you up for another, rather than holding you up any further. Uh, please do take some time to tune in. Obviously, things will be going on on Twitter. There's a whole bunch of <laughs> teams getting into it now and starting to tweet their um, their initial thinking. So this should be fun. Um, like I said, everything will be reported later. And um, really appreciate you all tuning in remotely. It's it's a big deal to be able to do that. Um, and if this all goes well, then the plan will be to do more of this. Um, this is just a tip, uh, dipping the toe in the water, getting a feel for interest and ideas and testing our hypothesis that um, 
Gov as a platform is even desirable uh, so um, and, and is even doable. Um, there's a whole bunch of other work that we've been doing more broadly. You'll be seeing outcomes of that come out in the next week or two. So there's a lot happening uh, and uh, we hope to wow you all with some future state ideas that um, take it from government delivery uh, to uh, I guess society delivery and to government being an enabler for innovation and um, uh, development and for genuinely solving the the problems facing us in um, the 21st century in a 21st century way. So thank you all again for your uh, uh, interest and your participation and looking forward to seeing the contributions and, um, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Bye.